So some some people with my computer, so they start everything. Yeah. Yeah. What did it do? Let me. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, can you read at a small um, uh, Yeah, and then how you being and Yeah, yeah, I'm How you doing? Ông bán lại, ông bán lại xe cũng chỉ ngồi nghe thôi hả thầy ha? Yeah, được anh làm sao? Yeah. Can you read at a small? Um, me or are you talking to on on? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, I think I think agree then. Uh, yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah, I I agree. The better, not much better. Yeah. Mm Oh, okay. So I think this can just be from here. So, um, is it big enough? Is that big enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, again, we um, we talk about the, the life of Buddha now, and we talk about uh, how he passed away. Uh, yeah, is that big enough? Okay. Uh... The Buddha's final words were, all contingent things pass away, strive onwards towards nirvana with diligence. These words highlight both the inevitability of death, even for perfectly enlightened Buddhas, and the importance of self-discipline and self-realization. Yeah, you can stop here. You know what's mean by uh, self-realization? Uh, uh, self-realization uh, uh realizing uh mm, realizing things yourself mm. and uh realizing the truth about yourself which is in, in buddhism the truth is that you have no self i suppose mm. is mm. the main thing he would have realized about himself yeah i don't know if you know about this one or not this uh what do you call um uh Pyramid, mass, vertical mass. Uh, oh, oh mass mass hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Pyramid. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have, you know about this one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Up here, cellularization up here. My teaching classes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so small that uh, yeah, it's this one. Mm. And then you can follow our conversation, right? And then, yes, I am. Yep. Mm. Yeah, right here. Mm. So, actualization and secularization. So, psychological needs like food, uh, bread, shelter, clothing, safety, security, love, and belonging, self esteem, and this one. There's a top one here. Hmm. Yeah. So, what do we think? It is it's not constant, right? But Buddha say, well, 
the Buddha attained the highest state of wisdom by self realization and self actualization, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like he climbed to the top of the pyramid and then flew away mm -hmm. beyond the pyramid. Yeah, that's, that's why it's so important for us to recognize what's the meaning of um, uh, attaining enlightenment and become a Buddha. Yes. Yeah. Um, Mm. We discussed about the word nirvana last week, right? Remember? Some remember the definition of nirvana? Um, In practical sense? Oh, it's like the um, the liberation from suffering, the, mm -hmm. the end of suffering, the, the extinction of pain. And uh, also, like, you, you're at peace with everything and yeah. So when our mind is so peaceful, so calm, there's no no more emotional fluctuation up and down. But we don't up and down. That's that's really main peaceful. That's really main everlasting happiness. For our common people, sometimes we're so excited up here, right? And our woman we so so depressed. So let's move up and down. That's why our mind away. Changing that right way, but someone that can that stay of mind straight and stay uh, stabilize the mind. And then you can follow our conversation, right, Anna? Yes, yes, I. Yeah, so that I'm talking about, yeah, so that's what Nirvana in practical sense. Mm -hmm. When we come on my down, no matter what people say, no matter what happened, you know, things out there, I must be calm. For us, sometimes we have it, but most of the time we are um, more up and down and more flux. Mm -hmm. But uh, for our heart, their mind is really simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why they, they would not have any kind of mental suffering at all. No stress, no anxiety, no worries, no jealousy, and everlasting happiness, and peacefulness. What we call the Ivana. Is it a wrong attachment to want to seek that mm, when we attend that statement this whether we call nirvana or uh, everlasting peacefulness or happiness it's just the name it's just the the word we, we recognize as but of course as much as we have some kind of attachment we get stuck there so we know that but uh, let's put it this way while we are driving the car, right? We know we're driving. But what happens if we so steep, right? In our driving that we hold the wheel too steep, right? And it could take a lot of effort. It takes a lot of energy from us. But we can do, you know, how at first, right? We have that type of um, tendency when we, when we first drove the car. But later on, but up to now, as an expert, when we're driving, we don't think much about how we control the wheel. It ultimately you win. So again, there's not harshment in, in that sense. Just, mm -hmm. You understand that, Sam? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we 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 and the car are at once. Mm -hmm. When we are driving, whether we want to turn left, turn right, uh, or back up, we are one with the car. But the moment we say, oh, I have to turn left, I have to turn right, I have to back the car and so forth, that's the moment we get stuck there. It makes sense now? Mm -hmm. When we do things in the natural way, it's much easier. It's synchronous, it's synchronous with, with our action. If we think, when we, we do things, we are thinking other part of that. That's where attachment comes from, that's where our suffering comes from. Right. And so let's say um, while we drive and we want to turn to the left, right? And yes, we see the sign. Right? It allows us to turn the left. Yeah, we just follow. But if uh, somehow uh, 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 we we get stuck in the middle and and the, the sign doesn't allow us to turn, especially I mean the, the L. And if we are not in, in synchronous with, with the, that present moment, 
we just uh, we say oh we may complain. I can't. Why, why don't we turn on? Why don't we turn on the, the, the green instead of the red? Mm -hmm. That's what I was mm -hmm. That's what when when we we touch something there mm -hmm. instead of allowing things come naturally. And having the expectation. That's the point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Even the combination. Yeah. And then uh, you follow our uh, conversation about um, uh, the question that um, somehow we get stuck if we um, uh, uh, if we attach too much yes. in what we are doing. Yes. Uh, yes. I, I think the, the, the whole point is probably the, the awareness that yes. we are mm -hmm. in that state of mind. Yeah. If we're not aware of uh, that we've been stuck then we we wouldn't know that we are stuck at somewhere. So I think through uh, the teaching of Buddhism and Buddha, we learn to uh, recognize ourselves and recognize our um, state of mind so that we are aware of when we need to or be aware of where we are, uh, what we say, what we do, what we... Uh, how, and how we live our lives so that we can be recognizing those moments where we actually being attached to something and that where the cause of the pain or suffering and uneasiness in life would brought us to or some of the uh, uh, lives you know pain that we go through mm -hmm. so if we be aware of it we can get rid of it and we can uh, let it go thank you mm -hmm. That's good. In short, in short, the Buddha told his followers, you are on your own. And yet, these are not so simple. For an earlier passage describes the Buddha giving detailed instructions for cremating his body and preserving his corporal remains, as befits both enlightened beings and uh, Chakravarti kings. His relics were to be enshrined in the relic monuments, stupas, or chakyas, situated in public places. Moreover, the Buddha in another passage encourages the practice of visiting the four places associated with his birth, enlightenment, first teaching, and death. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Hmm. So the Buddha gave the instruction how to make his body, right? Mm -hmm. And how to um, keep his uh, ready. And he encouraged um, the Buddhist people to resist the four heart places. Is that type, type of attachment or do it Well, it's kind of like um, they, they often will use the metaphor of the raft you know, to cross the river, you mm -hmm. know, and in some of the sutras, the Buddha talks about, you know, um, he'll say, you know, uh, like in the Diamond Sutta, he's like, in the Diamond Sutra, he's like, uh, this is not, I, I don't really have a body, this is my body, but this is not really my body, or there's, there's, you know, not really common men, but there are common men, but we just call these things, these things for expedient reasons, to, you know, save time and make it simple for people to understand. And so that kind of goes back to the idea of the raft across the river. So I think that, and like, whenever the Buddha is talking about how people should revere, you know, his remains in this particular way, it's mostly so, you know, people who are at like a normal level or a beginner level will know about the Buddha and, and be able to, to feel closer to the Buddha and be encouraged to feel close to the Buddha and, and have the interest in studying more. But the ultimate goal is to go beyond physical form as the ultimate goal. But in the, in the short term for now, it's like the raft that they cross is like the 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 you know the form we mm -hmm. we 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 focus on the form just enough to get past the form is that a good summary it, it's almost like the buddha left tools for us to stay focused yeah but even one, though... one uh, 
I have a question, Ty. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you could hear. Yeah. It. You know, yeah. I, I'm hearing all you guys' conversation, but I remember my question last, maybe a week or two ago, about this topic, mm. and we talk about. Uh, I, I maybe I'm not as well versed in the sutra sometimes. So when maybe there's a complex information that I have learned based on this passage here, and compared to what I have heard learned before. Uh, and I think you mentioned that as well, Tai, that uh, the Buddha, when he passed away on that day, uh, he, you know, some people sit and cry and weep and then, uh, and so on and so forth, and asking what are, uh, you know, what will he leave behind so that the people can follow? Mm -hmm. Well, the Buddha, I'm paraphrasing, right? Uh, I, you don't follow everything. It's not me that you're following. You follow my teaching and so on and so forth. And in this passage specifically, I'm not sure who wrote this passage, but if this is actually the disciple after 200 or 300 years wrote this, and then did the, the Buddha actually instruct hmm. uh, crema cremation of his body and then say the relics for these four locations? Or is it after the 300 years, the first council where people and uh, Anand and so on and so forth Gather together, and the, his disciple would say, "Well, this probably needs to be split up because people are fighting, and therefore need to put in these four locations so that it helps people." Like uh, one of the students earlier mentioned, that it's a a form to help us, those who are like, like me myself, at least focus on something, and we pay respect to Buddha, but it's not the ultimate goal to use that as a way to worship. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And we we need to be enlightened of that. that the how to self realization and self uh, shredding of all these uh, desire and attachment, and then we ourselves can become another Buddha ourselves uh, without attaching to all these form or physical relics and things like that. So I'm I'm curious of your discussion about this topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see what would you say? Yeah, it, it was almost like, to me, the, the Buddha was saying, you can have these things if it allows you to discover your true nature on your journey, but the journey is yours. I mean, even, I, I can't remember the sutra or the passage, but Buddha said that I'm not to be worshipped, that, mm -hmm. that discovering the true nature of things is should be our focus and the way we do that would be through uh, the full path well so again yeah let me say that oh uh, well it was all, all also kind of making me think of in the tutoring one thing that i i often have to explain to the kids if we're talking about you know a map of the world or like a model of what an atom looks like or a map of the solar system like i'm telling them all the time i'm like remember this is not how it really looks. This is not how it really is. It's a symbol that helps us understand it. Like, like obviously the world is not really flat, you know, and these continents and oceans look a little bit different, but we, we memorize the map as a way to help us think about the reality of the actual world. It kind of makes me think of that, you know, like, you know, he's, he's providing us with symbols and the symbols aren't the reality but they point the way mm -hmm. so again uh in buddhism we talk but, but my, my but my question to uh this is does buddha actually give us the symbol that buddha instruct us to have the relics that's my question or mm -hmm. are we as human being created for us to help us a different level of our journey to help you know those who have never I'm gonna say anything about Buddhism. So they need to use these form, use these techniques to help them worship. But I just want to understand the pure nature of when Buddha was. Well, we don't know all that stuff, but I'm just saying, I'm just hopefully that, that there was some scholar that had say, okay, Buddha does not give us all this. It's us after Buddha pass away, mm -hmm. we create these things. Mm -hmm. Do you follow my question? Yeah. So actually, again. Uh, you get um, that uh, you actually uh, uh, the example 
So the children will teach them in different level from the college level. Mm. Probably we talk about let's say um let's say this let's say the simple. We have to talk with for, with them in a simple way, in simple terms, so that they can understand. We cannot use some certificate, a complicated term that we go to went to school to college to explain to them. Mm -hmm. You teacher, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, very much so. so there is a Buddha. So depend upon the levels of understanding or uh, spiritual attainment uh, that his follow have. So everyone has different understanding about Buddha teaching. But for the common people, having the Buddha red is so important. Because that's the place, that's the thing they can worship, worship mm -hmm. that they, that's the thing they can connect with the Buddha actual body here and now. But for others, no, we don't need that. Mm -hmm. We just need to look at uh, ourselves, look in our pure nature, Buddha nature. But most of us, most of Buddhist people, they will not understand about that kind of things. And uh, Anand, you follow? You follow Anand? Yes, I, I hear you. Uh, yeah. I hear you, but, but, it, I, but you know, like at that point, I'm just trying to understand the pure nature at that point mm -hmm. of when Buddha was there. The, he actually instructed that yeah. decision to have relics. Yes, on both yeah. tradition, and both Mahayana and Thera tradition, we have before Nivana Sutra in both um, Sutra, the Buddha mentioned about this, the Buddha provide this type of instruction. So if one tradition talk, but other not, so that we have a doubt. But since we have both tradition and we would do this common term, common explanation, common teaching, somehow we recognize that just came from the Buddha. So basically, let me go back one more time. So in Buddhism, we have what we call conventional truth. Mm -hmm. And ultimate truth, conventional truth, that's what we talk in our common sense, in our normal activities, in our, uh, um, our normal conversation. Like, okay, we have to survive, we have to work, all right? Uh, we have something to uh, lean to, and so forth. And that's what's called conventional uh, truth. That's in come and go because of the uh, impermanence principle and so forth. For common people, yes, we need that. Um, uh, they need that kind of uh, relic, that kind of temple. For example, for the um, highly acute um, um, cultivators, they may not need the temple. They can go there, they can go to the tree, sit down there, to sit down there to do meditation. But for us, we need that. We need this place. We need the, um, the place so that we can stay indoor to do meditation when it's too cold out there, when it's too hot out there. Because we cannot handle that. We can handle uh, those type of, of um, harsh weather out there. But for the high attend people, they don't need that. Whether, whether it's a snow, whether it's, 100 degree or minus zero, minus one to 10, they don't care because they, they can handle their, their physical and mental uh, means. But for us, we can't. So that's why for the common people, like us, they would have provide this type of because the basic teaching or uh, uh, something for us to, to rely upon so that uh, eventually we can walk through the what they call ultimate truth. Ultimate truth, that's what we talk about in the higher tradition, mm -hmm. the Buddha nature that we need to attend to. We need to achieve to, we need to live with. But for most common people, they would not care much about Buddha nature. They talk about the very good karma. That's all. Um, doing uh, good deeds to help other people. That's why the Buddha encouraged the lay people that, okay, if you want to be born as human again, if you want to be born in these celestial realms, just do good deal. That's all. That's enough. But for others, yes, they want to seek for more uh, spiritually. 
they can do more meditation. That's why if you visit um, uh, some uh, Theravada country like Burma, Thailand, and so forth, most Buddhist people, they don't practice meditation. Most people, they follow what they call devotion. Mm -hmm. That means they can um, be double protector. They can build a temple. They can support the monks, and, and mostly. And that's all they do. They raise a good karma, that's all. That's why the Buddha said, okay, if you want to raise good karma, here, here. Uh, I have my own relic for you to wrap on, so that you can raise your good karma there. But for others, no, that's, that's not enough. I want to move on. I want to become Buddhist monk and now I want to follow a, a walk, a, a dive up into the spiritual path. That's why I want to spend more time in the forest to do meditation. That's why they have two distinct traditions, internal tradition. Either become a lay people to support the family to live in the society and to support the Sangha, that means the, the Buddhist community, the mm -hmm. monastic community, or give up everything to the Buddhist monk to walk uh, straight through the spiritual path. Make sense now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is two parts. But in Mahaya tradition, it's different. Mm -hmm. It's in between. In the between. That's why. That's why the lay people can participate in what they call the Bodhisattva part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, and Anand, can you hear us, Anand? Uh, Anand, can you follow me? Anand, can you follow my conversation? Uh, yes, I, I hear, yep. Yeah, do you understand now? You understand why I, what I try to explain? Yes, I understand that, but at, at, I, I still try. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm just kind of like, uh, want to know like, at the point when Buddha died, there's no two tradition. There's no oh. Theravada, there's no Mahayana. Mm -hmm. So, why would, how would Buddha know at that point to have relics or not? You follow me? Oh. For those who are on that path. So I'm just trying to understand that the, the Buddha knew that and he had that instruction mm -hmm. before he died, yeah. or pass away or move on. Or the, we who are after Buddha have left, then we kind of have that split. And therefore, this is how we help people uh, move along. I'm just trying to understand that from a mm -hmm. historical perspective, but more of a practical perspective, I'm... I'm probably more like the relics myself, mm, but yeah. uh, I just want to understand a little bit more about the, the truth about in the, the teaching of where that, that Buddha actually instruct that. But based mm -hmm. on what you're saying, yes, uh, both traditions have mentioned it. Mm. Uh, and I'm, I'm a little bit surprised, that's all. Mm -hmm. That uh, okay. Buddha actually have that instruction that to let him cremate and then save his body parts of remainings for us to worship. And that would, I'm surprised, that's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. So please remember, uh, right after they made the Buddha body, so eight kings, they fought for the heredity, not the monks. Mm -hmm. Right? That's because they like people. They, they want to have this kind of heredity to worship. And that's why the Buddha understand their mentality to give them the instruction. But three months after that, after Buddha passed away, the monks by themselves went to the cave. Mm -hmm. Five of them decide the Buddha teaching. They concern more about the Buddha teaching mm -hmm. than the relic. That's the lay people. Yeah, that's why I can explain. For the lay people, yes, they get one to bring good karma, mm -hmm. good blessing. That's why they focus more on the relic. But for the monks, the radius is one part of the spiritual practice, but it's not much important than the Buddha teaching by itself. That's why they came together to decide the mm, Buddha teaching. Uh, so that's just, that's why it's two distinct traditions. One is monastic, one is lay communities. Um, so um, whether we believe or not, again, it's, for me, uh, of course, um, uh, I start from Ashok, uh, King Ashoka, so he collect the Buddha's relic and spread out everywhere. 
uh, the Ashoka uh, era is, was about two more than two hundred years after Buddha uh, attending for Anna. So this this period grows, yeah. You know, so that's why, um, and of course, there's, there's many um, evidence uh, that they could um, determine that why why this type of what they call red worship, right? Mm -hmm. Red worshiping the tradition, the culture. Assist with both tradition behind the Theravada for lay people, mm -hmm. but for the monks and nuns, for the community, for the monastic community, this focus more on preserving the teaching of Buddha. You follow Anand? You, you follow now? Yes, I understand now. Can you uh, help understand? Uh, but so the, the four locations, maybe in that passage there are four locations. Can you help educate me on? Uh, uh, that four locations and remind me maybe like where it is like oh, okay. uh, geographically. Okay, okay. yeah. Uh, let me uh, let me see. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sure. It was sure. the one he was first teaching, and then when he was yeah. passing away, and then uh, yes, mm -hmm. right here. Can you see the image here on the screen? Yes, I I have let to me. blow them up a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. Let me put it here. So here. Here, what they call the Lumbini, where the Buddha was born. Right, right here, this one, this is right here, this one, this is the big one here, this Lumbini, where the Buddha was uh, born, nearby the pond, right? Right here. Okay. And the next one is the um, here, where the Buddha attended uh, enlightenment, what they call Bodhigaya. You got that? Okay. okay. Yeah, and the next one is um, here. Uh, where the Buddha first get the teaching, stana, or uh, or uh, the deep part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And okay. the last one, the last one where the Buddha um, end up nirvana. That means he passed away. That is, let me show you the place here. Hmm. Okay. Let's show this one first. Right here. This one here. This is one here in Kushanara. This one here. Mm, is a the this the uh, pagoda there, and then that's just this outside. Uh, here the the here that's inside. That's they have the whole Buddha statue, the whole line Buddha statue that he laid out there. We in this one here, it's pretty big. Yeah, okay. Here, can you see the map and then? Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, here so in, uh, where he was born. Uh, uh, Holy Gaya, where he attended enlightenment. Sana, where he uh, first gave a teaching. And Kush, Kushinaga, where he passed away. So those are the four important or uh, holy Buddhist okay. places here. So it's all of northern uh, India. Yeah, all northern India. India. Mm -hmm, right here, it's northern okay. India. So, okay. Yeah, remember in the past, the Buddha walk, right? As for the monk, we're not supposed to ride a horse. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because it seems prideful, or because it it, it gives yeah suffering for the horse. Yeah, but the uh, don't make me wrong. You know, Shen Chan, he rode the horse according to some legend. You see, he sometimes he rode the, the horse. Who did? Yeah, according to a legend, Who Johnny did? the Wax. Yeah, but um, mm -hmm. but monk is not supposed to. To ride the horse, yeah, because uh, we pay attention to um, uh, the animals, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyways, mm -hmm. so these are the four, the four other places and other one place, other places is so important too. Okay, yeah. So Anand, you can follow, right, Anand? Yes, yes. Come on, Thai. Okay. Maybe someday, maybe someday I have a chance to go visit those places. If I have a lot of uh, good karma, I'm gonna be able to make that trip. I just want to know where it is. At least I <laughs> actually right before. Have you been on three, four? Yeah, right before COVID nineteen. Uh, right before we built this temple, I told the communities that I would uh, go to India. Um, in the winter of two thousand twenty. Guess what? Yeah, COVID. Guess up COVID. Yeah. yeah, because COVID, so I cancel everything. Hopefully, I don't know. Five years, ten years from now, I don't know. Depend upon our karma. 
because right now I'm getting stuck with all kind of activities here. It's not easy to organize. Ty, I know you said that you have been uh, to to Bodh Gaya, Bodh Gaya um, and the Mahabodhi Temple. Mm -hmm. um, have you been to those other sites? No. When I went there, when I went there, my focus was um, the Bodh Gaya. And then I had, even I have not been in the other three places, but um, somehow for the Buddhist people, Bodh Gaya is so important. Because when Buddha came like him, you couldn't recognize the energy there. The spiritual energy there. Hopefully, yeah. Next time when we go there, I will visit the other place, the other three places. You know, in in Shravasti, where there was the Jetta Grove, where Natapindika's monastery was, mm -hmm. is there? Uh, is that a? Is there a monastery there now that people can visit? They, you know, get the old side. Yeah. For for tourists only. So yeah. No, no monks there. No monks. But. Uh, from time to time, you know, there are large um, Tibetan Buddhist communities there. So you can see, you can see many, um, some Tibetan monks stand around, but, but there's not the common place for them. Mm -hmm. But for the Buddhist Gaya, it's still communities mm -hmm. every year. Of course, up before and after COVID-19, um, millions, millions of Buddhist people are able to resist, the, especially the um, Mm -hmm. There's like temples from all the different, a bunch of different countries and, mm -hmm. and schools. Mm -hmm. In in these four places, especially uh, the um, the Buddha Gaya, mm -hmm. yeah. So the government, the Indian government, and uh, allow and get get the land to uh, each country, mm -hmm. each Buddhist country to build uh, Buddhist uh, center like Vietnamese temple, Chinese temple. Mm, Taiwanese temple, Burmese, and so forth. Yeah. It's huge. It's still community there. Yeah. Okay. So let's just, uh, yeah, this. Uh, Next time, if you have a chance to go, let me know in advance. Sure. I, yeah. I want to come. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah, I'm yeah. hoping to get a passport this year so I can go next year. Maybe if I can save enough money, I'd like to go next year. If you are a free man now, you're single, <laughs> so you, yeah. you you don't have much obligation except yeah. you can come and go on your house. Well, I was hoping maybe I could get that job with my company that's in that's in India. It's in South India, but it's South India is still closer than America. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Oh, you so your company. Uh, it has a job there. It has a branch there. I want to get a job there. I don't know if I will. I told them I want it. We'll oh, yeah. see what happens. Okay. But this, if you move right, you would not need to go there, right? Oh, I would. I would go there. I would go there. You I want would, to? I would be a boss of a bunch of Indian programmers. Really? It's hard. <laughs> yeah. South India is here hard. Yeah, that's one thing to think about. Very proud. Huh? Very crowded, crowded, and hot. But too hot. But uh, I would get paid more than I get paid now. But it would, I would have a cheaper cost of living because everything's oh, cheap really? in India. Oh, so, well, you know, in the summer, people and the cow, the animal, they may die because of the heat. No doubt. Yeah, it's too hot. That um, after eleven a.m. Uh, they would not allow any kind of business construction during the summertime. Yeah. It was too hard for them. Mm. Yeah. For the whole summer times. Yeah. Anyway, so, the, all right, please. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, Ray Wild. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, while the Buddha himself may no longer be directly available to his followers, his liberating presence continues to be manifested in diverse material forms through his recollected works of instruction. Uh, contact with pilgrimage sites and material objects that mediate his presence, whether by virtue of direct physical con connection, as with boreal relics, or uh, physical resemblance images. Okay. Mm 
when you pull off and you're someone else? Um, well, it's just saying essentially the same thing as before in terms of how, you know, the, the Buddha, he, he is no longer a man on the earth, you know, in the, the form of a, a living man's body. But because of these, uh, you know, uh, recollected words um, like the suttas and the sutras um, and the pilgrimage sites like we were just showing and uh, these like objects like uh, the relics and, and statues and things, you know, it's something to, to make people still feel some still feel some connection, um, you know, even though he is in uh, Paranirvana instead of the earth. So a contrary uh, record, historical record, they say that during the Buddha times, the Buddha just allowed people to plant the Buddha tree in front of the monastery that he used to uh, live. Um, that's one thing, the Buddha tree. And other objects like the Buddha bowl, mm -hmm. uh, star, uh, not the Buddha statue. But according to legend, they say that um, as one summer, the Buddha um, used to set the power to go to the heaven, teach for the whole summer. Mm -hmm. So this one king, he, he so devoted to the Buddha that he missed him for that three months. Mm -hmm. And somehow he, he ordered people, his people, that um, uh, whoever make the Buddha um, image by wood, he will give uh, a good lump sum reward for them. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course, no one could do, but uh, this uh, one celestial beings, um, actually, that's one considered Bodhisattva. So he appeared as a layman, as a, as a human, as a, a human like us. So he approached to the king and said, well, I can handle that job. So he did. He did. He made uh, the, the Buddha statue by wood, the wooden Buddha statue. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's so, it looks so exactly like the Buddha according to the legend or record. Mm -hmm. So three months after the Buddha caught up there, he went out and he passed uh, that um, golden, uh, that wooden would I tell you, hey, in the future, if I'm not here, you represent me um, uh, to teach and and become an image for the Buddhist people to follow um, and worship. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So that's that from the tradition. And of course, both tradition mentioned about that too. Yeah, from that time on, and actually, especially right after the Buddha passed away, they create all kinds of Buddha statue, mm, whether it's by wood, by um, uh, ceramic, uh, by rock, uh, marble, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that is the, the tradition. Mm. Anand, you follow the story, Anand? Yes, I, I uh, appreciate that story. Yeah. MMS as a historical, I love her history. And I'm just kind of curious, uh, would there be any uh, archaeology where yes. we would know that is uh, which statue would be the most, uh, the oldest, and where, mm -hmm. where would that be located? Do you know? Yes. It's just, if you, um, if you look, uh, look at the, uh, the art in Buddhist history, let's see here. <laughs> But <laughs> two, uh, uh, hmm. and remember, also oh, these are these are the the old old style of Buddha statue here. Buddha Buddhist art, and if you look at the uh, sometimes I, I encourage my students to look at the week. He hear this information, but not to cite directly. So they, they put down the Buddha art here. This is the uh, great core Buddhist art, first century. Um, and uh, it's just here, they, um, right here. Anand, you can see my screen, right, Anand? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, so you see that that's the pre iconic place, um, the fifth to the first century BC. So structure uh, become more explicit, right, with a lot of teaching. And so uh, at first they, they would not make any kind of Buddha statue, but later on, after Buddha uh, passed away, they, they made that uh, uh, iconography uh, of the Buddha. Uh, you image and so forth, mm, and this is iconic place. That's that's, that's when uh, we have the great Rico Buddhist art, Mathura art, and Amaravati art too. Yeah. Uh, so let's see here. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it is. This is whole the whole article is here. You can see that um, yeah, this is first century, first century, and and doing this uh, from the fifth to the first century BC, uh, yeah, they have the, oh, some kind of uh, Buddha statue there, but not popular, um, uh, right? Like uh, after the first century BC, but especially during the Ashoka times, yeah, they drew a lot of Buddha stupa and uh, and pagoda. Okay, here. And and the, the pillar, right? We talk about that later on too, right? Yeah. Mm. Artists here. Artists were reluctant to depict the Buddha and thrown up equally and develop a sophisticated uh, and economic uh, symbol to avoid doing so even in the narrative scenes where all the human figures will appear. Um, yeah, so, so this is the art here. So they would use like, I know uh, some of the symbols they would use is they would show his footprints, but not him, or they would show like the parasol, the, the yeah. sun umbrella. Mm -hmm. That's one, uh, something that's, that's symbolizing, that's something yeah. that represents him, like Woody tree, anything that that's yeah. related to him. The and three jewel. Related to him. Woody tree, like the uh, Amara, like the star, like the mm -hmm. ball, and so forth. And mm -hmm. Especially Woody tree. Mm -hmm. uh, since since this is a topic that you know that that Anon is is so interested in, um, I would like to just add, even though this is not Buddhism, um, just in the in the general world religion sense, um, since I've studied like every religion to some extent, um, especially Christianity, since that's like my cultural background. Um, all all religions, all the big ones at least, have gone through different movements and phases where sometimes they're for icons and sometimes they're against icons. Mm -hmm. Like um, in Christianity, in the uh, Eastern Roman Empire, and uh, like the late classical, early medieval times, they had a movement called the iconoclasts, where they just decided that they suddenly hated all the all the statues of Jesus and Mary and the saints and they went around just smashing them and uh destroying the paintings and frescoes and stuff but obviously not all the Christians like that they were like no we have to to keep these images of Jesus and Mary and the saints to to remind us and so it was a whole big fight and conflict um so th these things this this is you know something that I think that's one of the reasons why the Buddha kind of saw this coming and was 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 kind of ready for it. He was like, you know, you guys can have the relics because I, I think where the Buddha did understand everything, he of course understood human nature and he understood that people would would want to have icons and relics and things because this is like every every culture. I mean, the only. The only major religion I know of that doesn't have symbols, is, that doesn't have these kinds of symbols, is Islam. And um, I mean, there's a few exceptions even to that, but but generally they're the only ones that don't have icons. All the other religions have icons, but all the ones that do have icons from like Buddhism and Christianity and Hinduism, they've they've had phases where certain of their members, sometimes big groups, sometimes small groups, have said we're against icons and try to get rid of them, and it's a whole back and forth. Mm -hmm. So, like, if we love someone else, right? If we respect someone else, we want to have something from them, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's the image, the picture, and so forth. 
That's why, that's why the beginning, even during Buddha times, mm -hmm. some devout Buddhists, they, they like to have this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we cannot, because we still have some kind of, we can say, uh, some kind of attachment, but we need to lean on them, right? Yeah, you know, we need to lean on them so that we can rely upon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so like we need to lean on the GPS or the map to go. Otherwise, we, we get lost. We don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know the way. Mm -hmm. So at at the school you teach, like the Christian, the Catholic, right? You know, they have a lot of the um, Christian. Uh, yeah, in, in Catholicism, there's a lot of iconography and and a lot of symbolism in in the classroom too. Uh not so much in the classroom, more in the chapel, mm -hmm. but in the classroom, there's always a cross, a crucifix mm -hmm. on, the, on the wall that every every room in the building has one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, especially some hospital, the Baptist hospital, mm -hmm. right? Do they have uh, the cross and more? Do they just to keep uh, some yeah. cross in the chapel, not not in the the, the patient room? Right? Um, it depends, really. It depends because uh, you know, some Christian hospitals are are more subtle about it, and others are more obvious about it. It really depends on who's running the the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Norton Hospital chain was created by several local religions mm -hmm. in different yeah. factions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that Norton Norton is was started by a few churches, but and they mention it, and they they have like plaques that mention <laughs> it. But besides their chapel, I don't I don't recall having seen any uh, Christian symbols um, in in most of the hospital, but the Catholic hospitals definitely. And um, the, the um, I've not been to the Baptist any Baptist hospitals in Louisville, but the the Baptist hospital in Lexington has crosses all over the place, but mm -hmm. only, but only crosses, not not anything like a statue mm -hmm. or a painting. Yeah. So and and from time to time you travel and stay at the hotel, right? Will you encounter yes. the Pope, uh, the Bible in the cross uh, in, in the, the Bible, the, yeah, the Gideon right? Bible. Yes. Mm -hmm. From time almost to time, almost every year. Almost every hotel I go to have a Bible. Yeah. The only country that I go to that have no Bible is in Saudi Arabia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That How about uh, have you uh, been in Vietnam? I have not stayed in hotel in Vietnam. No, no, you didn't. I don't know if whether they have that or not. I, mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah, that's the country. Every time I go to Vietnam, I go with family, so I don't stay in hotel. <laughs> yeah, my ex-wife um, spent some time in Japan. She's she's not Japanese. She just went there for school. Um, and she told me that in Japan, many hotels like she stayed in will have a Bible, but they also have a Buddhist book. And she bought me one and I have it at my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Especially um, in the big city. Uh, yeah. So some organization in Japan, they put now one for Bible book, a Buddhist Bible book there. Yeah. Buddhist Sutra there. It's a compound of, compilation of uh, some short sutra. Yeah. That people can read there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is just required. This is a lot of money, a lot of manpower. Yeah. To do those things. I remember when I was in college, uh, Penn State University. So during the semester, Mrs. Semester, so the the lay people, I mean the, the whether Christian or Catholic, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So they um you know at Penn State we have a uh, the small campus, but actually this is it's, it's like the whole uh, or a small city. Mm -hmm. So they they stand from corner to corner to pass out the Bible. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? No. Have you seen that? Yet? I've not seen that specifically, but I've seen similar other activities. Yeah, they, they uh, uh, yeah. So they um they took part to just stay at one corner and all corner, so that whoever, especially student, passed by, they would give the Bible to them. And then, have you seen that in in the Naples era, or uh, when you were in school? Have you seen that before? Uh no, I went to a, a Lutheran uh, college. And it's a private, it's pretty, uh, in Minnesota, so they're pretty, uh, 
well uh, run by the Lutheran uh, uh, faith. And uh, they do have, you know, chapel and very heavily influence on your, uh, you know, kind of like a curriculum. But I have not seen myself specifically. But when you do travel, maybe at airport and things like that in like Los Angeles area, you may see uh, some of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, also people sit, you know, on the, the corner street, for example may have uh, stopped you, mainly, mainly big city. You know, I'm talking about big city like New York, LA. Mm -hmm. uh, I would see that more. But I have one one time, and this is from, uh, I went to Japan, and uh, and I was a little bit shocked. You know, I'm a little bit, maybe I'm a little bit naive. And uh, I saw a monk, right? I saw a monk, and he, uh, he at, at, at one, you go to a temple, and he gave me, you know, at, as I walked down, he gave me, uh, he dressed up like a monk, let's put it that way. And he gave me like a little sutra. And the first thing he said, well, oh, give me the money. <laughs> After he gave me the, the thing, he, he, he did pay the money. And I, and I realized, really? oh, I got a scam on this one. Okay. Yeah. Is that his spoke in English? He was in, yeah, he spoke English. He looked like a monk and he dressed like a monk mm -hmm. and everything. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. it was uh, away, downstream away from, uh, a nice big, uh, you know, tourist uh, temple. Uh, yeah, so that, that's my, 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 one of my experience. I teach my uh, my son as well. Yes, a big monk. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is how it's, it's all about the yeah. greed. Mm -hmm. It's all about money, greed, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They trick people in the government. Yeah, they, they give the this and then ask for donation and so forth. Yeah, and, and mm, religious tourism sites, there's always a, a ton of dudes like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a lot in um, in India. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you see I've not been there, but I've seen videos and heard people talk about it. And of course, you also know. Yeah, they're, they're aggressive there with the with the tourists. They're so poor that even even the children and adult they consider themselves as professional beggars. Mm. They follow. The tourists, wherever they, they uh, go, to ask for money, mm -hmm. pay for money, especially uh, around the Buddha, holy places, like especially like Bodhi Gaya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to be careful. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, so thank you. Uh, so so see you, uh, Anand. So thank you. So see you next. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Always nice.